Welcome to my little corner where there's no wrong way to play with paper and I hope you're having a wonderfully blessed day. In this video I am going to create the monthly swap for the Love Our TS group. Every month we do a larger swap and it's where you take um, a theme and this month it was heritage that we vote on so um, you know, you have a say in what we're going to do, the members of the Facebook group on Love RTS. So um, they voted for Heritage. We, that's not really they, I'm part of it too, right? And um, you make 15, you get three weeks to make them. You mail them in, because I'll send you all that information. And then you will get 15 lovely Heritage themed things back. You will not get duplicates. You will not get one of your own. So it's a lot, a lot of fun. If you're interested in that, as always, I have the link in the description. The only place you can do that is not here on YouTube. It is on the Facebook group, Love RTS. So please come and join. And this is what I've made. So you probably think I'm crazy having forks here, but we're going to go over that. So I have created some vintage tags and I will put close-ups you know, at the end, because I just think it's easier to see them. I like looking at close-ups. Um, I'm not a big vintage person, not going to lie to you. It's not really my thing. Even when I do older photos, it's very rare that I use vintage items. It, it really, truly is. Now, don't mind my scrappy piece here, because I'm going to be using some glue. So there's that. Now, I used a paper pad. Um, let's see here. I have it sitting here. I don't want to, it's called Theodosa Square that I have had for two years. Two years. And look, I haven't even remotely gotten into it. So I think tomorrow I'm going to tear it down and I'm going to share it with a couple of my scrappy friends. I'm going to keep one. Each one I think has three sheets. I am going to make two little happy mails and I'm going to mail it to my friends because this is ridiculous, two years. I mean, I love the papers, but we're gonna go through that together. So watch for that video tomorrow. Just gonna tear one down. Then I also use some of this ephemera. I've shown this before. I will put the link for that um, pad. I did buy it on Amazon. I will go over the paper here in a moment. Um, and then I have also, this is from, I've shown this before as well. Uh, when I was making my ATC cards and I'm trying to use up these elements, I'll put that link below if you're interested. If you do a lot of heritage um, themed embellishments and or pages, or if you junk journal, I recommend these. Right. If you create embellishments, you will like them. Okay, so now let's go over this paper. This is the paper that I chose that was in that paper pad. And it's thin. I mean, it's not like, yeah, it's like copy paper thin. So... This is what I have done. Now I'm gonna create a bow, hence the forks, and I saved one so we could make two together. Because I don't know about you guys, it's hard for me to make bows, and I've seen this a few times, I decided to try it, game changer, game changer. So make sure you stay for that if you want to. I mean, if you don't, you don't have to. All right, so this is super thin. So I took a paper that I necessarily didn't love, right? I mean, I don't know what to do with all these flamingos, but I, it's heavy cardstock. Like it, it's not like heavy, heavy, but it's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these two together and make my tag more substantial. So let's do that. I start with some temporary adhesive. Yep, I decided to get another easy runner. I have seen so many people have a hard time with their ATG gun. I just opted not to get it. I, yeah, I, I'm just not willing to. <laughs> They're kind of pricey and I don't know. So if you've been watching me, you know where that's coming from. All right, so then I will take my glue and I'm going to glue all the edges because I don't want the edges to come up. And then I will trim it up with my scissors. Okay, so we're going to trim it up with our scissors, and I'm just going to go right across here. You guys have seen me use it before, but I thought I would show you how to do this with absolutely no tools and with product that you already have. Now, in this instance, I'm not necessarily using a lot of scraps. I'm not, but I am using product that I need to use, hence the paper. Um, so... We're going to call this a win. <laughs> right? 
Now, all I like to do is cut a corner and I take that corner and now I always have to do this, I don't know about y'all, and literally flip it over, okay? I have ink all over my fingers, so don't mind me. Obviously, I've been inking. And just like that. Doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, but there's our tag, okay? So now what I am going to do is I'm gonna take my favorite ink. You guys know, I love it. I got a new one, um, brushed corduroy. I've actually had it for a while, but I got sick and it was stuck in the mail. And I'm gonna ink all these parts. So what I have is I have a piece of the ephemera from this pack. Okay, that's all this is. It's already torn and done. I'm gonna ink this, I'm going to ink this. I'm going to ink these floral bits. And let's see here, I also have a butterfly. So I'm going to ink all those and I will be right back. I might fussy cut these and ink those as well. Okay, I'll be right back. So now that I've inked them all, I'm going to take my base here, which is basically what this is, right? And I'm just going to play, same thing I do on layouts, trial and error. This is basically a mini layout, right? I mean, it kind of is. All right, so I don't really know what I wanna do here. I know, I think I want the butterflies to be over there. So maybe like so. Okay, and I'll put this butterfly here. I think I'm gonna put it there, right over the writing. I'm good with that. Um, maybe tuck this one down in here. I like that. Do I want that there, or do I want that coming up over here? Ooh, I kinda like it there. I could even do it on top. That's the one thing about these stickers. They're kind of like iridescent, right? So. Hmm, no, I think I'm gonna do behind. This one I'm gonna do over top and here. I kind of created a journaling tag. You know, you could put the date, a small little journaling, something like that. Okay, so now I like that and the next step is to glue it all down. So I'm going to put the stickers down, glue everything down and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I have it all glued down, I put the stickers down, make sure you rub these stickers really well. They um, they stick once you get them on there, but you do need to kind of, they're almost like rub-ons. They're not, they're stickers, but they kind of have that same, you know how you just gotta kind of, what is it called, varnishing them or, um, I even do have a bone folder, yeah, if I can actually find it. So if that's what you'd like to do. I did make sure I did that really well. I just used my finger though. Okay, I'm trying to make myself use my tools, right? <laughs> Okay, so now I, some of them, you will see I did a little bit of stamping and this said just be a dreamer. So I, I think I want to do that on this one as well and I want to put it right here. So, I mean, I guess I could put it down here. Mm, yeah, I think I'm going to put it down here. There's still plenty of room to ink. So I'm going to take it. And it's vintage, right? Stuff was not perfect back then, so you do not need to stress about it. And besides, there's no wrong way. Oh, geez. <laughs> Don't do what I just did. <laughs> he tried to attack me. Did y'all see that? Okay, so um, I actually got that from this Echo Park stamp set. Um, I don't even know what the name of this one is. Oh, um, coordinates with Be a Dreamer die set. So it's Be a Dreamer. All right, I do have the dies too, but. All right, so I used that stamp. You guys probably saw that in a haul. I recently got that. So there's that. Now I need to make the bow. So I'm gonna take away the white. Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's a little girl there. Well, not gonna use it now. All right, the it's attacking me. I'm losing parts. Yeah, okay. Now, I just made a bow and or I did ribbons at the top. If I did the ribbons at the top, I just cut three, I slanted them, and then I used my Tim Holtz mini stapler and I put three um, little staples in there. And I did half and half. There's no rhyme or reason. I ran out of this ribbon, that's the only reason, and I wanted a brown ribbon. So, I did save two and I'm gonna show you how to make little bows. Now you can do this with any size ribbon. And hands down, gosh, look at all the ink on my hands. I'm gonna have to go wash my hands really good after I get all done. Um, so, not that you guys wanna know that. Two forks. Now, if you're gonna use this size ribbon, and I didn't even look to see, let me, I have my ribbon box here. So let me look to see what size ribbon this is. Sorry, I guess I should have 
This is um, 2.74 millimeter. No, that's not right. I don't know how, how wide that is. It's about fourth of an inch. There we go. I don't know why I'm trying to look at all that. That's too technical. That's how much is on the roll. <laughs> I'm trying to be all teacher like, y'all know better. Okay, well, that's what it is. So about a fourth of an inch. Now you can use this size, but if you do use this size fork. So this is just a standard fork and this is like, I call it a turkey fork, <laughs> a ham fork. I don't know, it's a serving fork obviously, but yeah, I mean, maybe for a giant. You can get these at the Dollar Tree. You don't break out your really good ones. I mean, you can if you want to, but, um, and no, I don't leave these in my craft room. I go get them and then I throw them in the dishwasher when I'm done, because obviously I've touched them, right? All right, so you're gonna take your fork and I'm gonna do the bigger one, one, because that's the size ribbon I'm doing, and two, it's easier. When you first start, please don't try to start with this size ribbon. Don't, you're gonna get so frustrated. I know from experience, <laughs> so don't. But once you have it down, go to town. Use thick ribbons, you can even get the bigger forks, whatever you wanna do. I'm telling you, the fork is the way to go. All right, so let me show you. Many of you may have already seen this, but I'm gonna show us for some of us, like myself, who are outside the loop. So it really doesn't matter how long this is, as long as it's long enough to work with. Now I will tell you, when I first started, the longer, the better for me. Now, I can do it with little shorter ones now, but it did take me a while, okay? It, they make it look so easy on tutorials, and sometimes you just have to practice, and that's kind of what this is. But I've learned a couple tricks. All right, so you're gonna take your ribbon and you're gonna pull it tight, okay? Pull it tight on here and hold it with this finger, all right? Then you're going to, don't mind my, fingernails because I've been working in the garden and my nails are gone. That's literally gone. Okay, so then you're going to go like this and have the bottom piece be a little bit longer. All right. Now, old nursery rhyme over the river. So over the top ribbon. Okay. And through the woods go in the middle fork down here, just like that. All right, and I'll make a second one, all right? Then you're gonna take this and you wanna pull it tight again and hold it with this hand. You're gonna take this one now and you're gonna go up, keep it flat, and through this third middle fork. Everything is through the middle fork, okay? Just like that. Now, can you see, if I take this away, can you see the bow starting to form? Again, hold this side tight. Now we're going to flip our fork over and we're just gonna tie a knot. And believe it or not, that's all you do. So let me tie this knot, okay? Now, don't go this way with them. Go this way. Because if you go the other way, your center is not gonna be right. And pull it tight, okay? If you want it looser, you can loosen it up. All right, there's our bow. We just slide it off and voila. That's it, you're done. Don't try to mess with it other than just, you know, put your, your ribbons down where you want them. And that's it. So then to adhere them, I just used some glue dots. These are from Walmart. I've had this pack for two or three years. I don't know. I don't, I don't do this kind of stuff. I don't use my ribbon enough. But today is the day, right? Okay, so then I'm gonna put a dot in the middle. Oh, I'm gonna put a dot on each side. You get a dot. You get a dot. And I will put the third one on the other bow part oh my gosh it's sticking to me see this is why i'm not a teacher y'all <laughs> i'm just a common girl that's it all right now where's my tags what did i do with them oh another one okay oh that got stressful okay so then i'm just gonna take my um glue dots that's what they're called and i'm just gonna position it where my hole for my tag would normally be okay now, I kind of like how long that one is, but for the sake of, you know, come and wherever you want it, that's why I like my ribbon kind of long. And then I just kind of go straight across and do the same thing, go in the opposite direction. And just like that, I have a bow. Okay, let's do one more real quick. Because it did take me a couple tries before I got this right. Are there any more? 
Oh my gosh, I got it. I have an appointment to the eye doctor. You guys would be proud of me. Two weeks. <laughs> Yours truly. All right. Let's try it again. This one might be a little short. All right, so we're going to keep the bottom one longer. Over the river, through the woods, to grandmother's house we go. Pull it tight, all right? We're gonna go up. This one is short. Might have to get a different ribbon. Okay, nah, I'm gonna make it work. Like I said, once you play with it, it'll, it'll work just fine for you. Okay, tie the bow. I'm not gonna have very big tails on this one. I thought I had a bigger piece, I don't know. Okay, and then we're just going to manipulate it so it goes down. I'll go just like this. I'm gonna cut this one before I put it on there and put this, well, it worked out good because my butterfly would have been in the way. Huh. See, God knew, he had a plan. He just didn't inform me. What's new? <laughs> he doesn't have to tell us nothing, right? Okay, so I'm gonna glue it down again and then that will be it. Now, you can make a whole bunch of these. You can sit in front of the TV and use up some of your ribbon and make some bows, send some happy mail, whatever your little heart desires, right? So I hope that helps some of you guys make bows. It helped me a lot, like a lot, a lot. I had the hardest time with bows for a long, long time. I used to think to myself, how do people sit there and tie that tiny little, especially with the twine, that, I don't, and the fork thing, especially this size, totally works with the twine, do it. Then you can just like wrap your twine around and then stick the bow on. Yeah, I'm telling you, it totally works. Cause I don't know about y'all, I love the twine bows, but mm, heavens, I cannot do it. And I have small hands, yeah. Okay, all right, whoops, I did a, that's backwards. Is that the way it needs to go? That's the way it needs to go. And you can always put a glue dot here if you really want it to stay down. I didn't, but there we go. Those are my vintage tags. I love them, and I'm not even really into vintage stuff, but boy, they turned out good. All right, I hope that helps you. I hope you're inspired. That's what it's all about. Do things your way, because there's no wrong way. I hope you will come and join us over at the Love RTS Facebook group. And um, if you join soon, you can vote for next month's theme of the big one. And if not, that's okay. Every Sunday, starting tomorrow, again, we will have another mini swap where you only have to make four embellishments. So check us out. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're a first timer, I'd love it if you subscribed and joined my crazy. <laughs> and I hope you all have a very, very blessed day. Bye-bye.